You All right, so I'm back at the prostitution. I'm getting my actual foot this time instead of using the loner foot. So we're getting the upgrade, and I should be able to walk better then, and it's definitely made a difference. And Donnie wants to explain to me why there's the white liner, because I'm like, what's the point of that? Okay, so this is a flexible inner liner, which makes my job in the adjustments a lot easier. Building prosthetics are built based upon the components or what characteristics of the leg is. For example, if you say I want to buy a car, there are many different values of cars and every car is a little different. Same thing with a prosthetic leg. So some things are really expensive and some things aren't. This flexible inner liner is very expensive. So when I was first in the field and you start out, you're trying to figure out well, why is it not that it's so expensive because the insurance companies, but is it really worth the expense to put it in a prosthetic or is it better not to have it? Everybody that builds a leg has an opinion and realize that you, you do your best for the patient, but everybody still has an opinion. So after a few years in the field, I realized that this liner, it's called a flexible inner liner with a rigid frame. And the, the reason why it's so beneficial is you can make adjustments in the future. The leg is going to shrink, but the prosthetic won't. Right. So if you're trying to adjust and see where the shrinkage is, it's really difficult. But with the flexible inner liner, you can see where it is by feel because you can squeeze, you can see through it, and you can put pads on it so the prosthetic leg will last longer and gotcha. fit better. Especially with the preparatory leg or the first the first leg, the, the limb's going to shrink, you want to be able to adjust it and see it and make it as easy and as best as possible. So for example, I can slide this flexible inner liner and I can squeeze in areas and I can see where the gapping is. If I were to try and just put the prosthetic leg on, how am I going to, as a prosthetist, judge where the gapping is and make an right. accurate adjustment? But with this, I can pull it in, I can line it up, I can make sure everything's lined up, I can feel where the gapping is, I can see where it is, and then I can also glue pads either on the outside or the inside of this. Depending on where it's loose at, so if it's right. if it's a problem with some pain, then you'd go on the inside, whereas if it's a problem with it being too loose, it goes on the outside. Well, actually, or is a that little, simplification? Little, it's simplification. So. You, you can put a certain number of pads on the outside in between the two, and then that makes it easier because pads have, have more friction, friction and makes it harder to slide in. But okay. if you have too many pads on the outside, when you push it in, you're going to get a wrinkle in the plastic. So it's That's more right. the wrinkling of this form because okay. of it, and you can also shrink it down. That's another trick that, that gotcha. for, for another day. Um, but that is for that. And I should say one thing, oftentimes people think backwards a little bit with padding and what needs to be done. Generally speaking, if you have a rock in your shoe, you're going to get a sore. So you have to do the opposite. If you have high pressures, you got to take out that rock or have a golf ball divot or okay. relieve the pressure. So if people will think, oh, I have a, you know, say you have a blister on your foot. They put a band-aid over the blister. Well, that actually creates more pressure. You actually want to dig a hole underneath the blister gotcha, to relieve the it. pressure. Yeah. So sometimes if people get pain here, it's because you shrink too much here and you're bouncing back, back and, and forth. forth. But sometimes you need to just put a pad on either side so when the leg comes forward, it hits on the pad on the and other side, side rather than instead up there. of where the bone is. So that's where you need to kind of... Kind of creating the, like a cavern for right, it to go into, right. kind of, sort of. Yeah. So, I, that being said, you, you want to trust the prosthetist, but there also should be some communication, as well as you using your prosthetic leg should know how it works, right. so that way you can get the best function, and, and you know how it feels. And not get kind of, and also make sure that they're not like just rushing you out the door type thing. Exactly. And you as a double amputee, have you had it without the liner? I, I still have old technology so I've always had a, a, a set of aligners that you can okay. feel through but I'm on 1960s technology because that's what I'm used to and that's what works for me gotcha. I should something also too that is super super important 
is built into the cost of the prosthetic leg is the follow-up care. Generally, it's 90 days. A lot of companies will extend it further. But if you have a problem with the prosthetic, go back and stand up for your rights to make sure it's right. Because you can you be have living a, with right, it. If you have a leg that doesn't fit right to begin with, you're going to need to get it replaced faster, and that just costs the insurance company more, money, more money, and you're not walking as well. And as well as, butt. yep. And and your mindset is the leg will never work right. So realize that you know we're That's all kind of defeating the purpose of you know having a prosthetic. If you're like, oh, it's not going to work, then what's right. the point? Yeah. So so everybody's a little different in. Every surgery is a little different. So sometimes it's a little more painful, sometimes it's a little less painful. So there's a fine balance into judging that, but you should know that you shouldn't get the runaround. And there, it, 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 it's a sad thing. If you fit a leg well, you actually make less money. Because, <laughs> you know, the right, leg lasts longer. Don't, yeah. Whereas if a leg fits poorly, it always needs to be replaced and the person building the leg makes more money. So the things are a little backwards and you yeah. as the person using the prosthetic should be the oversight for the insurance company right. and try and keep the monies down as well as you want as much function as possible. So know yeah. that, hey, I've had to rebuild yeah. legs before. It, uh, you know, you, you don't like to, but you do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's your learning experience or just, hey, I tried this aspect, it didn't work. We're all human, we all think. But, you know, it, it's doing what's right and speaking up. But you as a person using a prosthetic should know that you have a 90-day window that if the prosthetic leg isn't done right, speak up for yourself and get it so it's adjusted or worked right. And so that's coming from you as a prosthetician and as an amputee yourself. Yeah, who, and it's yeah. just, you know, it, it's a fine balance of just knowing what it is. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, right in there. Okay. Because it's right at the end of the bone, which is like you can see where the end of my bone is. Okay, so... This whole area is going to shrink up. Yeah. Mommy. Yeah, I know that. Mommy. But it's, yeah. you can right. see, it, and that's yeah. the part where I'm hitting it, and yeah. it's. Give me a second. I'll get 